Thank you all for joining us at this uh, very early, early hour session, but we are absolutely thrilled to be joined here today by such a distinguished Foreign Minister of Montenegro. Thank you so much, Minister, for joining us here. It is absolutely critical that we all take a moment to recognize the importance of Montenegro's contributions to the Alliance, about the role that they are playing uh, and the significance of uh, partner nations, particularly in the Balkans, and making sure that we have, of course, uh, driving home this open door policy to ensure that Montenegro's contributions are recognized amongst the alliance here at the ministerial meeting, and of course at the youth ministerial meetings held here by the ATA. So without further ado, I'd very much like to turn over the floor and his tight agenda to Foreign Minister of Montenegro. Sir, please. Well, very good morning to you all, and uh, thank you very much for attending this session. Thank you very much also for the possibility to, to uh, talk to you this morning about uh, where Montenegro stands on our road towards uh, NATO membership. Uh, but at the same time, as, as the sh schedule is very, very busy today, what I'd like to do is to offer several introductory remarks. I'll be very happy uh, should you have a couple of follow-up questions and then I'd like to ask you to permit me to leave, uh, given a given very tight agenda. Uh, but again, uh, it, it is, uh, I'm, I'm grateful for this possibility. I remember last time talking to young Atlanticists, it was uh, in Chicago at, at the summit, and it was also a great event, and I very much appreciate your interest and your support, because this is really a crucial point in time uh, for Montenegro with regards to what uh, are our foreign po uh, policy priorities, and definitely, this year, uh, top and key foreign policy priority is to earn the invitation uh, to join NATO uh, later this year. As you know, uh, last year at the Cardiff uh, Wales summit, uh, NATO member states made a decision to open a new stage, uh, a new phase of Montenegrin uh, accession towards NATO, which is called intensified and focused talks. Um, for the purpose of uh, making decision whether to uh, join Montenegro, whether, whether, to, 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 whether to invite Montenegro to join NATO no later than December uh, this year. Therefore, we are so, so somewhere halfway uh, this, uh, through this, this road, and uh, definitely uh, this event uh, 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 in, in Antalya, but also a number of events coming up, will be uh, crucial uh, in order to and critical in order to uh, make this uh, decision. Uh, I believe there is a number of very important uh, aspects one can uh, talk about when uh, presenting the case of Montenegro. Uh, what we usually do, we present uh, several key arguments why Montenegro uh, uh, should join NATO and why NATO should uh, see Montenegro as a credible candidate, but also a candidate that um, uh, further enriches uh, the alliance and provides with certain, uh, uh, certain added value. Uh, so it is, it is uh, obvious that Montenegro joining NATO further provides uh, Montenegro with internal security, territorial integrity, stability. This is crucial, uh, given that we see uh, road towards NATO as just another face of the same story. The other face is EU and, uh, accession process. So those two processes go hand in hand together. Bringing about, uh, NATO brings about security, uh, stability, uh, EU brings about development of the institutions, and that, uh, that, that's, uh, that, uh, that is both uh, incredibly important if you'd like to set up, set up the platform for the economic prosperity in the long run as we've seen, as we have witnessed from the experience of many other countries that have gone the same way, um, uh, Eastern European countries that have had a successful transition. So uh, it is crucial uh, to understand that NATO brings about more security and more, more stability. And it is uh, the best possible option uh, a country can have, especially a uh, country sort of Montenegro can have because any other option is simply inferior. Uh, in today's Montenegro, uh, there's a lot of debate about uh, whether to join NATO, and some people uh, support the view that neutrality, military neutrality, is a better option. It is simply not true. Uh, 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 joining collective system of defense, collective system of security, is a superior option uh, from a number of different uh, angles. 
Obviously, it is a better option because uh, it creates more stability, you, you can pull and share, and any other option is a lot more costly, a lot more uh, irrational, uh, expensive, if you, if, you, if you like it as well. But the story doesn't end there, and uh, there is a lot more other aspects, or at least two more very important aspects uh, in this story of Montenegro joining NATO. It is the security of the Western Balkans. Uh, Montenegro joining NATO brings about further aspect, a further level of security for the Western Balkans. How important it is, uh, it's visible in, in, in today's Western Balkans because although uh, the region has uh, uh, moved uh, uh, far from uh, what we were in the 90s, uh, last decade of the 20th century, it is obvious that there's still a number of challenges ahead and uh, one can never invest enough in security. One can never take for granted that security is a done deal. No way. Uh, uh, therefore, uh, the, uh, Montenegro joining NATO also brings about added value for the whole Western Balkans. And out of uh, several aspirant countries, uh, obviously, Montenegro is a front runner. Uh, decision will be made in December, but it simply cannot be seen as only uh, 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 work that, that, that has to do with Montenegro. It deals with building bridges in the region, uh, further bridges in the region uh, when security is about in order to make sure that we are there to, to make uh, 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 this goal uh, attainable of uh, making Europe uh, united, free and at peace, uh, uh, which has been a strategic goal uh, for many years. There's also a third a very obvious argument that why Montenegro should join NATO and why NATO member states should find added value in this. It is because of the fact that Montenegro is a Mediterranean country. And in today's Mediterranean, which is uh, fragile, which is boiling, uh, southern flank is, is, is in, in big mess. Uh, uh, European Union leaders are discussing how to respond to migration pressures and so on and so on. It is obvious that another Mediterranean country, the only one remaining basically in the northern Mediterranean should join NATO. It should also uh, bring about added value in sorting this or helping uh, sort this problem um, uh, in an adequate, adequate way. So once Montenegro is inside, basically the whole northern Mediterranean will be part of the same collective system of security. And that is really uh, a crucial and, and, and also uh, important argument to, to, to raise when discussing this, this matter. So where, we, where are we right now? Uh, that, that the question goes. Uh, as you know, Cardiff's uh, decision was about opening intensified and focused talks. And uh, as Montenegro has already, uh, had already been uh, a part of the membership action plan, we were supposed to uh, prepare uh, a new uh, annual national program. And what we did, basically, we addressed several key areas. Uh, those four key areas are the following. It's the rule of law. It is uh, for the defense reforms, it is intelligence reforms, and then uh, making sure that public support grows in Montenegro uh, 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 in order to support, in order to support uh, NATO membership. And I guess uh, uh, it is also visible and obvious that uh, Montenegro has made, made progress in all uh, these uh, uh, key areas. When we're talking about uh, rule of law, uh, there's obviously a lot more to be done, and rule of law cannot be established overnight. It is a longer process. But to a certain extent, it is quite complementary to what EU uh, 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 enlargement process brings about. Uh, as you know, uh, key uh, of the new approach key, uh, uh, in, in the enlargement process in the European Union is fundamentals first, and we're talking actually about rule of law. Montenegro already uh, uh, talks with the EU on rule of law. Uh, chapters 23 and 24 are open, and there's a, a number of quite comprehensive action plans we're dealing with. And uh, very recently, we have managed to round off uh, necessary legislation for that. Um, all the necessary uh, and key appointments in the judiciary have been finalized uh, very soon. One uh, important uh, will also be made, which is uh, related to uh, the setting up of the new Special Prosecutor's Office, and that will be another benchmark in, uh, in, in this process of uh, developing institutions that can provide with uh, rule of law standards. 
that is also uh, quite welcome by, by uh, NATO member states uh, uh, because many will judge the readiness of the country also by the progress made in this field. With regards to defense, I think uh, the fact that I'm here, uh, the fact that Montenegro takes part in a number of uh, uh, peacekeeping missions, Afghanistan most prominent one, uh, uh, Brazil support in, at this stage as well with 17 soldiers um, uh, helping uh, advise uh, Afghan national forces and so on uh, as part of uh, already uh, a number of years uh, process in which we show our capabilities, our interoperability. And uh, that's not the only one. We also take part in several other uh, very uh, demanding missions and showing that our army, although small, can bring about added value, can uh, 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 can uh, exercise interoperability standards and therefore uh, be able to show um, the, uh, why Montenegro can and, and uh, uh, contribute to the overall uh, alliance. There's uh, a third area, it is intelligence reforms. In, in, in this particular area, we have made also deep reforms. Uh, very recently, uh, uh, new law on, on uh, um, uh, agency, national security agency was passed. Uh, uh, implemented. Uh, there's uh, a lot of reshuffling, uh, also restructuring of the agency taking place. It opens up the space uh, for uh, new people to come in, uh, to refresh, re-energize uh, this, this particular institution and further help Montenegro in uh, security and stability uh, by reaching standards which are important and uh, definitely our intelligence will be able to uh, fully contribute to what Alliance uh, uh, as a as uh, as a structure uh, 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 brings and, and, and why it is important in uh, uh, responding to modern day challenges. The fourth area, the fourth area which is also very important is, is public support. Uh, as you probably know, uh, uh, it is a question that polarizes Montenegrin society. Uh, but it's of course not a straightforward question in neither of the member states of the NATO. There's a lot of debate, but uh, once you are inside NATO, it's probably not so uh, a prominent debate. But an, in a country that, that aspires to, to join, and uh, it is basically at hand of, of, of joining NATO, uh, it, it, is, uh, it is quite a heated debate. Uh, in Montenegro, actually, uh, there's a discrepancy between uh, 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 the support for EU and support for NATO. Uh, EU enjoys a lot, a lot bigger support. Uh, basically no political party, parliamentary ones, uh, um, uh, 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 opposes uh, EU membership. So all of the political parties are in favor. And all are working towards that. Uh, all are participating into the process. And uh, definitely uh, uh, that is a crucial reason why the EU enjoys uh, bigger support. It is like uh, almost two-thirds of support. Whereas NATO, uh, it is uh, more difficult. Uh, but currently, support stands uh, like 36, 37% of the total population. Uh, there's uh, a num uh, number of people who oppose. And that is why public support is so uh, a prominent area in which we need to work. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions, uh, a lot of... Uh, um, a lot of uh, dilemmas, a lot of uh, uh, you know, uh, aspects we need to clarify. And that is why in, in uh, past months uh, we've been uh, very active in conducting uh, so-called public dialogue, public campaign, you know, to make sure that people really understand what is it we're talking about. Because talking to ordinary people, sometimes I realize that they have an attitude towards uh, uh, NATO, uh, be it yes or no, but at the same time, I'm not sure how much they really understand about what NATO is. It is to some extent because uh, some people still remember uh, uh, socialist times and, and uh, uh, NATO was a pact. Uh, uh, a lot of people remember NATO campaign from 99. Um, although Montenegro was not that heavily bombed, but it was hit. Some uh, people died, there were some civilian casualties and so on. So many people used that emotional argument uh, to confront. Uh, in, in, and in, in, I mean, in today's world with the Eastern crisis also, there's a lot of people who think that Montenegro should refrain from joining NATO because uh, uh, they think we should not further deteriorate relationship with Russia and so on and so on. But those are all, I think, um, uh, a lot of uh, misconceptions. Uh, we 
have the responsibility to to uh, 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 to, to, to clarify. Uh, uh, and obviously, there's a lot more work to be done. Uh, in in coming coming weeks, coming months, we will definitely step up our efforts. It's important that in the course of the coming months. Uh, there's more activities, more events, because on the other hand, also people who oppose uh, NATO membership, who favor other options, are also quite, quite active in this, in this game, trying to raise some of the arguments uh, I just uh, mentioned in order to, to uh, simply uh, complicate this process of understanding what is it we're talking about. Uh, because uh, uh, Sometimes it's not easy uh, to use rational arguments and match uh, uh, emotional ones uh, uh, some, some, some people use. And additionally, uh, I'd like to say that uh, after nine years of Montenegro independence, when it was very clear uh, back in 2006 that uh, from, the first, from the day one of Montenegro independence, strategic goals were known. It's uh, EU and NATO membership. So now, now nine years after, and almost at hand of the membership, it is very easy to, to see that more or less all those people who were against Montenegro independence 10 years or nine years ago were now against NATO membership. Uh, it is obviously not just by coincidence. And I think we need to uh, work it out better uh, uh, in, in coming months. Good thing is that all the governing coalition uh, supports NATO membership, which is not only one or two parties, it's a bigger number of parties. It is uh, also, that some opposition parties support uh, NATO membership. So uh, I'm sure that we will work out and uh, uh, provide uh, with uh, also uh, tangible, visible results in this area. And I very much hope that uh, in coming months, uh, support for, for the NATO will further, uh, further increase. Uh, I'd like to stop here and uh, uh, offer the possibility of uh, questions uh, to which i would be very, very happy to, to try to answer. Thank you very much. Minister, thank you so much for your very, very insightful speech. Uh, I wanted you to know that uh, I've had the very fortunate opportunity to actually be in your country twice in the uh, very recent past, and it became very clear to me upon my time there that very rarely does NATO have partner countries that are as motivated as Montenegro is, as driven towards its policy of future membership. and. This will, at least in my view, uh, highlight the fact that Montenegro, I think, is the perfect example of a country that went from a security consumer and turned itself into a security provider within a very short time frame. And my first question is, what exactly is it, in your view, that is the most critical reform that you accomplished uh, in Montenegro to help drive that change? I think which uh, uh, are quite important when NATO is about. Uh, and also, <laughs> when, when, when NATO is about, but also uh, quite important for, for the EU enlargement process. Uh, and talking about reforms, uh, we also see uh, NATO as a, as a mechanism to underpin further internal reforms uh, which will also accelerate European growth for, for, for Montenegro. Uh, by talking about NATO, it is always a mistake not to uh, see it as part of the bigger picture uh, when our region is, 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 is in, the, in the focus. Uh, it's because of the fact that integration process, uh, uh, and we see NATO and EU as part of the same, so to speak, campaign for Europe. Let's Europeanize uh, Montenegro, whole region. The how to do it? 
uh, it's, it is to combine NATO and NEU uh, integration process. So those two must be seen as part of the bigger package of bringing about, finally, a decent level of security in our region in order, in order not to shake uh, every you know, decade or every generation uh, whether our region will, will come back to, to, to conflict and so on. So it is difficult to single out one uh, particular reform because everything we're doing contributes to this bigger picture of restructuring institutions, of setting up new, uh, uh, more organic institutions that uh, after a while will be able to respond to, to any challenge of, uh, first of all, consolidating democracy in Montenegro, uh, but also setting up uh, a platform for the economic prosperity because uh, unless there is economic prosperity, uh, then, then after a while, simply you see fatigue, uh, people's fatigue for, for further changes because they, 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 they measure their happiness Usually, one of the indicators is the depth of their pockets. So, uh, the integration process needs to needs to direct country into this, uh, uh, keep on this uh, on this on this road. I wanted to. You mentioned something very interesting. You mentioned the issue of, of popular support, and and this is something that I think is uh, really quite different, it, depending on where you go in in, in your region. It, it's something that I think the number has fluctuated between uh, somewhere in between 30 and 50 uh, percent over the years and you know what exactly do you think is the most important message that not just uh, officials representatives from from yourself and your and your government but also he in, in, in allied nations what's the number one message that you think needs to be conveyed to not only your public but I'd say the wider Balkan region so that they really can overcome this issue of popular support well, it, it is quite a, uh, it is a matter of complex nature because uh, uh, I, I mentioned that as well. I think uh, uh, if, if you ask people in any of the member states, you'll have a lot of uh, fluctuating opinion polls and uh, results and measures suggesting that uh, this level of support or that level of support is, is uh, for NATO, for example. Uh, additionally, uh, different countries uh, often for different, uh, different ways how to uh, uh, resolve this. Uh, some had referendums, but along with EU referendums, some had referendums and uh, were engaged into very, very uh, 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 intensive debate. Some simply ratified in, in Parliament uh, with the argument that it's a matter of national uh, security and, uh, and it is normal that people who are elected by uh, by uh, uh, their citizens should uh, make the decision and so on and so on. Uh, and the, the, in, in Montenegro, and, and usually you do that after you have invitation. Uh, you receive the invitation and then you make decision on what to do. Uh, uh, should you like to organize a referendum or just have uh, some debate or simply uh, do with it in, 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 in Parliament, in the National Parliament. Uh, in our case, uh, we've been asked to intensify our efforts to increase public support without having uh, uh, prior reach to, to, to the invitation. And that has been a very bumpy road because last year, ahead of the Cardiff, uh, total population, it was 46% of the total population at some point supporting NATO. After Cardiff, it went down. 46% of the total population would mean that uh, had we had a referendum at that point in time, like 50 something percent would have opted in favor of that because total population means also those people who never turn out, uh, simply undecided, not interested and so on. But after Cardiff, and uh, 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 it, it went down, uh, probably, probably uh, uh, it, it shows how, how one has to uh, manage expectations. And now we are, we are expected again to increase, increase uh, sup uh, public support. Uh, um, so it is, it is very risky, risky business, because uh, uh, after a while, if you don't have uh, uh, a clear-cut decision by the NATO member states, it's difficult to navigate the expectations. And what I've tried to do is to outline all the important arguments one should employ in order to, to ex explain uh, how, how complex it is. Uh, so, sing uh, I mean, uh, s in, in, if we need to single out uh, important message, then it, it is 
in my view, it is uh, that people should understand, again, that uh, security can never be taken for granted. And, and plus, uh, uh, if we really want to change patterns in our country, complete transition, uh, which is also transition of values. It's not only introducing multi-party system or privatize some companies. It's also transition of values, if you'd like to make your transition really successful. Then it has to be understood that uh, uh, having more security and NATO can be the only uh, uh, guarantor of security in our region. It opens the door for uh, uh, turning this, I mean, referring to Montenegro country, into a truly uh, politically and economically part of Europe. So that's why it, is, it, is, uh, 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 it should be seen as one campaign for Europe. Montenegro really stands out in terms of what it's invested in this path. Uh, its commitment is very much unwavering. This is widely recognized. But if the ultimate return on that investment is membership, which has eluded so far, it's, 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 it, it seems that most people are in, in very much agreement that this is something more or less inevitable. Mm -hmm. But what returns on the investments that you've made are you pointing to now to address the issues of popular support, to address, to make sure that you're carrying this message in the right way and that, the, and that your, your population is understanding that they're getting already some return on everything that they've invested from all the reforms and all the efforts that they're contributing to the alliance? Well, it is well. It is an interesting question, uh, uh, and and it also helps shape uh, the overall uh, dialogue or campaign about about how to present uh, NATO to to ordinary people. Uh, you know, to help them make decision or take position on that or change position on that. Uh, contrary to the fact that. Like 36, 37 people, percent of the people are straightforwardly in favor of NATO. Uh, more than 60 percent, like two thirds, expect that Montenegro will eventually become a member state of NATO. Uh, so they may have some dilemmas their own, but they basically see no problem with that. Mm. Uh, even some years ago, uh, let me draw one more parallel. Even some years ago, when Montenegro decided to, to make a very complicated decision of recognizing Kosovo, mm. Uh, in order to, to uh, help stabilization of the region and so on and so on. I think the vast majority of people were against that. But government was credible and uh, was, was courageous to, uh, to make the decision. At some point uh, in time, the uh, uh, relationship with Serbia was very cool, but now it's again very good relationship, uh, frank communication, cooperation in different fields. Uh, so it is important to, to understand that uh, very often, especially when it comes to this sort of investments, uh, there are a lot of uh, less visible aspects uh, that should be taken into consideration when making this decision. And due to the fact that they are less visible, it's not so easy to present them adequately. But when you ask people uh, in, uh, uh, questions about how supported they are in different contexts, for example, in the context uh, if uh, NATO membership will bring about more investments, more, more, more employment, what would you say? Then 50% plus says, well, yes, we are in favor of NATO. <laughs> uh, and and it, it, that's why it is important to, to try to uh, use uh, uh, this side of the argument and show the example of, uh, for example, some Visegrad countries like Poland, the Czech Republic, Slovak, Hungary. Uh, uh, some of those countries, like Poland, for example, has really been a roaring uh, uh, in terms of dynamism, in terms of uh, economic development, uh, political development, and so on, could really serve as a, as a you know, lighthouse for us. Although, I mean, we are a small country, Poland is a huge country, but uh, in, uh, uh, from the concept uh, point of view. Uh, so I think we need to, we need to use uh, uh, those arguments and those sides of the whole, whole process to make sure that people really, really understand so that they are not entrapped by, by illusions or misconceptions. Now, I, I want to turn it over to the audience to get some, some, some feedback, but before I do that, I, I wanted to ask one final question, which is that here we're joined by uh, roughly 40 delegates from over 30 different countries uh, working in a variety of different ministries of defense, foreign affairs, journalists, academics. 
So we have a great elite group here that we've gathered to be alongside the ministerial meeting. And uh, my question is, what's the message that you'd like to give to the young professionals that are sitting in the audience today, that are participating in this, uh, in this uh, unique forum? What's the number one message that you'd like us to bring back to our capitals, to bring back to our establishments and, uh, about Montenegro? that you understand situation better than they do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the need for, for communication and uh, in interaction, interchange, uh, exchange of information, knowledge, uh, culture. Uh, we, we belong to the same uh, 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 I mean family of values, same civilizational uh, uh, approach and so on and so on. And it is really crucial uh, 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 to, to transmit this, this vision into uh, what has been applied in practice. Uh, I, I'm sure that a key message uh, I'd like you to, to pass to your establishments is that uh, uh, Montenegro deserves to join this circle. And mm, you cannot make a mistake by, by inviting Montenegro to join. Uh, it is indeed very difficult uh, times we're we, we, uh, we living uh, with the crisis in the east, with the crisis in, in the south, with internal crisis mm. uh, inside the European Union. Uh, and uh, in those uh, times, uh, uh, courageous, the courageous make, make uh, important decisions. And although it may seem a small decision to make, I mean, small country and so on and so on, uh, how come only one country to join? We've always had, you know, waves of enlargement, so on and so on. But it matters. It matters to the eventual goals of uh, reaching uh, 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 this vision of Europe really united, free, uh, uh, and, and, and at peace, working together to find its own space, uh, new space in, in, uh, in, in, in the world, uh, and transatlantic cooperation and, and, and interchange and interaction is, is, is crucial. Uh, therefore, transatlantic uh, cooperation should be strengthened by keeping, uh, in, 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 in uh, keeping alive open door policy. Thank you very much Thank for you. that, sir. I wanted to just turn it over to the audience uh, who would like to ask the first question. Can we get a microphone up, uh, up front for our, for our Dutch delegate here? Hi, my name is Marianne. I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, you talked about popular support in your country, or maybe the lack thereof. Do you maybe see a difference uh, in generations? Do you Could maybe, you please repeat? Uh, do you see a difference in popular support for NATO accession uh, in the different ge generations in your country? All right, okay, all right. Well, <laughs> interesting question. Uh, you would have expected that uh, elderly people are by, by default against because of well, some, some uh, old days uh, uh, issues and that young people should be more uh, uh, looking forward and so on. It is not the case. And, 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 and sometimes I'm actually struck by the fact that, uh, you know, uh, young people, high school people or students uh, don't understand really uh, the world uh, uh, surrounding them. Uh, it may be their fault, of course, uh, because uh, a uh, young person should be very eager to understand and read and, 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 and learn and so on. Uh, but it is, I think, uh, uh, our fault and I think political leaderships uh, should, should invest more uh, into, into making people understand. But the, 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 uh, actually, when, when, when I, when I uh, explain the situation and when I uh, uh, use the argument that, that security is never to be taken for granted, I'm, I actually mean the young people, who due to the, uh, well, it's a different uh, uh, world we are now living in. I also reckon to be a member of, uh, well, younger generation and so on and so on. But as time passes by, there's a, I mean, uh, uh, the, the growing discrepancy uh, <laughs> and uh, there's new generations coming up and they're different. They're different. Uh, uh, is it because of the IT? Is it because of something else? 
but they are different. We are a lot more similar to our parents than our kids are to us. So we, first of all, need to understand them and we need to try to talk more to them uh, uh, in order to, to understand that, uh, you know, being, uh, you know, uh, 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 taking part in some social network like Facebook or Twitter or whatever, and uh, uh, this sort of uh, isolation you, you tend to live in because uh, of, uh, of, of uh, the IT that, that has brought about, uh, that, that doesn't mean uh, that uh, uh, you're isolated from uh, everything else that may be going on. One spark is enough uh, in, in the Western Balkans to change things. And we've seen a lot of them even some days ago in Macedonia, unfortunate events. But also some months ago, uh, how, how a drone over a football match, a mm. football stadium can all of a sudden uh, raise tensions and so on and so on. So a, a spark is enough in our, in our region. Uh, and uh, additionally, the fact that uh, also internally uh, European countries are faced with a number of, of challenges and so on. It, it, the whole thing requires that we are all a lot more active and participative in this uh, business of, of, uh, of making people better understand. Um, it, it's, I'm not talking about you know, stoking fears and things like that. I'm talking about really providing with facts, providing with uh, consistent uh, consistency in order for people to understand rather than you know, all of a sudden side with uh, either extreme politicians or ex extreme fundamentalists, that, that's a risk uh, uh, we are also running. Thank you very much for your remarks. My name is uh, Patrick Maldre from the Estonian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, we have a, a war in Ukraine essentially because of that country's decision uh, to move towards the West. Uh, I'm curious if you felt uh, any sort of subtle or overt pressure in your country uh, based on your, your path of Euro-Atlantic uh, integration, uh, whether your government or, or your population has been uh, sort of influenced or, or attempted to be influenced in one way or another uh, to choose one set of alliances uh, over a different one or over the one that you've, uh, the course that you've chosen. Thank you. Yeah. Well, obviously, the decision to side with EU on, on Ukraine caused a lot of uh, debate in Montenegro uh, because there's a, a number of uh, opposition parties who, uh, and here who are still very much against some additional structures like uh, the Orthodox Church and, and also some NGOs who are you know, very negative about government's policy. Um, and a lot has been caused by our siding with, with, uh, with the EU on, on Ukraine. Uh, you know, some people claim that we have betrayed uh, historical relationship with Russia. Some people use different arguments and so on. Now, joining NATO is, uh, uh, fr from the Montenegrin point of view, join NATO is not about confronting with none of individual countries. It's about expanding collective system of, of security and it's about you know, strengthening our internal security, security of the region, of the region and also I mentioned, mentioned Mediterranean. But th this decision and the fact that we are approaching the date uh, when foreign ministers of NATO uh, are supposed to make decisions whether to invite Montenegro and the fact that we are also trying to conduct as many reforms as possible uh, and the fact that pu public support is something that uh, will be used as an indicator to see whether we have accomplished some, some goals or not, uh, is an open door. It's an open invitation uh, f to all those who think the other way around to use propaganda tools, to use uh, different arguments, and so on and so on. You know, I, I was, uh, Victory uh, uh, Day, Victory in Europe Day, uh, last week, last weekend, uh, was an interesting, actually, day to see uh, a number of different propaganda tools uh, in place uh, being applied. Uh, you see, M Montenegro was on the ally side in the Second World War. It was, by the way, in the First, in the first World War also, but then we lost independence uh, uh, after the First World War. But in the Second World War, we were also as part of a bigger uh, picture uh, uh, on, on the ally side. And it was, it was uh, 
uh, really difficult uh, because uh, uh, to some extent, uh, uh, you know, confronting uh, Nazists uh, and fascism and so on, we were also confronted with, uh, uh, it, it was also civil war because some of the people uh, fought uh, against, against partisans and so on. But cut, to cut a long story short, victory, uh, victory day, victory day in Europe was uh, a, a clear example. Uh, and uh, one, of the, uh, one of the events was also, uh, you know, Montenegrin Night Wolves branch, you know, riding around and also uh, speaking against uh, uh, government, uh, you know, betraying history and so on, traditional ties and so on and so on, which is, which is uh, uh, absurd, which is absurd. Uh, so uh, and this is only one example. And you have, you can see more. Uh, uh, also, using uh, using the celebrations to pass messages uh, that uh, uh, you know joining NATO is a wrong thing to do, and so on and so mm -hmm. on. So, uh, uh, and, and I'm quite sure you will will be able to see more of it as as time will will come by. Um, and and uh, that's why I'm trying to explain uh, not only here, of course, but also to my uh, interlocutors, to my counterparts, uh, foreign ministers in other countries, is that you can't see things uh, 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 through a simple lens of, well, now you have a 36%, fine, uh, energize your uh, campaign, and then all of a sudden it will be like 45 or 55. Right? It's a lot more, a lot more complicated than that. Instead of uh, commending government for uh, taking this decision like we did in case of Kosovo, uh, instead of uh, uh, recognizing that government enjoys uh, big support of, of the population and according to political party opinion polls, it doesn't change due to the fact that we have uh, made this decision or siding uh, uh, with the EU on Ukraine and so on and so on. And accepting that sometimes it is too uh, complex uh, 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 nature, we are asked, well, just ignore that and focus on increasing from 36 to, I don't know, what, what number? I, I, I think it's a wrong approach. I think it's a wrong approach. Um, and, and, uh, I, and, and, and the situation or circumstances a year ago, uh, in the early days of the Ukrainian crisis, were, were different from the perception of the ordinary people point of view from what we have, what we have today. So, uh, so uh, that's why uh, I think uh, we all, uh, no, and, and that, that, that's also one of my messages, that, that's mm. why my message uh, uh, that, that uh, uh, you also are very much uh, uh, invited to help us and make this understanding better uh, uh, in order to, in order to uh, bring about some of the shared vision uh, uh, in, 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 in our part of the world. Well, that's very much uh, something that we look forward to, to, to driving home when we go back to our capitals because we really do want to say as an audience from uh, ATA, from its Youth Atlantic Treaty Association, as well as uh, the variety of different distinguished delegates that we brought for this, that we understand very clearly the motivation. We understand very clearly the need for credibility. We also understand that breaking a 50% threshold of support is not really the key issue. The key issue is understanding the contributions, valuing these contributions, and setting an example for partner countries so that they can, in fact, take a look and see that countries like Montenegro can lead by example and not be uh, pushed in one way or the other, that they can lead by example, that uh, even a, a small country can have a huge impact for the Alliance and for Euro-Atlantic security. So I really wanted to thank you so much for joining us. We thank deeply you. appreciate your presence here. and. Uh, the Atlantic Treaty Association and the Atlantic Council of Montenegro uh, looks forward to the To Be Secure Forum where uh, we, we hope to see you again soon in about three weeks. So really, thank you so much, sir. We really appreciate it.